Hello everyone. Welcome to the Cloud Native Wasm Day North America. I hope everyone is having a great time at KubeCon and at all the co-located co events. I am myself Shivai Lamba. I'm currently a contributor and mesh mate at Layer 5, which is a service mesh open source community and has some of its project under the CNCF landscape. Uh, today, I'll be taking over the tutorial on how we can engage WebAssembly in the path leading to machine learning in the intersection of machine learning and uh, cloud native. And with me, I have Mrithanjay, who will be also explaining some of the concepts. So over to you, Mrithanjay. Thank you so much, Shivai. And thank you so much to everyone who is here. Uh, I hope you all are doing well and taking good care of your health in this pandemic. Uh, myself, Mrithanjay Sharma. And currently, I am a final year computer science engineering student in India, as well as I, I'm an SD intern at HackerRank. Uh, having been contributed to many cloud native projects like Kubernetes, uh, build packs, uh, I have uh, uh, regularly try trying to build more and more uh, in, uh, helping empowering communities. And today with this session, we also hope that uh, we are going to learn something amazing from all of you and help share the knowledge that we have. Uh, so moving on to the discussion that we are going to have about today. The first thing that we wanted to discuss is uh, like the lingua franca of machine learning is Python, of course. But we did not want to do a versus kind of comparison between Python and Rust because Python has its own importance and nobody can take its place from the ecosystem of machine learning. But here we are today discussing a relative uh, study, a comparison between both Python and Rust. And if we observe a few points uh, where Python uh, can like behind Rust is uh, one of the fundamental reasons is this, that Rust gives better performance. And why it gives better performance? Because it is compiled directly into you know machine code. There is no virtual machine or interpreter required between the code and the computer. So that is one great advantage that Rust has. Another important advantage of uh, Rust over Python is that Rust thread and memory management. Like Rust might not have a garbage collection system like Python, but the compiler uh, kind of, uh, the, it being more a compiler type of language, compiled language, it provides better memory secure, memory, memory difference leak security, and thus saves us from other hazards or irregularities. Another thing is that, Rust can be compiled into WebAssembly bytecode, which is going to be one of the most fundamental ideas of our discussion today. And I mean, this has been also been uh, observed in various studies. And as a matter of fact, a study by IBM already highlights how Rust and WebAssembly together have resulted into 12 to 15 15 x performance gain over not only plain Node.js but also 25 X performance gain from Python. And if we look at, uh, I mean, uh, there's one uh, uh, library in Rust that's called Linfa. And uh, what, what is, it, it, in spirit, it is similar to SkyKit, but it, it is written in Rust. And if you look at this graph, if you look at this graph, then we find that Linfa on a Rust web servers handles 25, uh, times more requests per second than SkyKit learn and seven times more than Linfa uh, Python wrapper on a Python gRPC server. So this is another, uh, uh, you know, uh, a result which we can figure out to tell like how we have observed that machine learning, which is uh, right now a hot buzzword in the industry, everybody is learning machine learning and they are trying to leverage its uh, algorithms uh, to build some cool algorithms and products. But if we look at highly uh, standardized algorithms and how to optimize them, then we can definitely try to figure out and see how Rust and WebAssembly can play a major role in them. And today this talk is something about that only. Now, we will be wondering how WebAssembly comes into picture. So one of the most important things about uh, WebAssembly is that WebAssembly is a compiled target that effectively provides, uh, you know, 
uh, executables that run in native speed. And that helps in extremely small and efficient containers, uh, which are virtually anywhere. And with the added benefit of being highly, highly, highly secure. So if you look at WebAssembly, now they provide highly secure, high performance, machine independent bytecodes. And another th important aspect of uh, WebAssembly is that it, it is compatible with multiple languages like C++, Rust, and it allows for them to have a compilation target. And since one of the things that we uh, just not discussed that it's, it is a binary instruction format, it enables native decoding, making it faster than comparative runtimes. Now, another important aspect that we are going to discuss is like, of course, we are going to talk about machine learning, how it's going to be, you know, simplifying our machine learning model conversion deployments. But we need to know that how this security and high performance features of WebAssembly uh, are actually implemented or, or, uh, or are connected with cloud native and web both and how uh, is cloud native evolving with WebAssembly. So not, uh, not, uh, not, uh, not wasting any time more, let's move on to that slide. So connecting WASM to web and cloud native both. So WebAssembly is expanding its space. And not only in the arena of machine learning, web or cloud, in fact, even in cloud native. So having a, it has been already approved by W3C. So it, it is a language of web only now, but, and, and, and thus it's supported by compatible browsers like Mozilla, Chrome, but it has been being, being efficiently leveraged by cloud native technologies. And that's why we have CNCF sandbox projects like Basm Edge and Basm Cloud, which are utilizing the strength of WebSM. They are getting connected to the cloud native and WebAssembly web intersection. Now, we, but before we come to cloud native, because uh, that, that's going to be a, another discussion, we, we, we also need to check how it has also been, been you know, playing an important role in connecting to the web. We can see this fact from this uh, single point itself, like if we see how Rust's performance Web assemblies, security and portability, and JavaScript's ease of use. If they all combine, how they can not only result in faster applications, faster build times, but also can help us uh, drive us things at a more secure at a more secure space. And how can this be done? Like this can be done like like the host app can be of Node.js dot web application written in JavaScript, which makes web assembly function calls. Well, the WebAssembly bytecode program can be written in Rust and which can run inside the WASM Edge runtime. So if you see in these two points itself, we have covered like the intersection, the intersection of uh, web assembly with uh, Rust with web and how it is making the web application arena much more secure and faster. Now bringing WASM, uh, to cloud native, Wasm has Wasm Edge is a CNC project that has enabled serverless functions uh, to be embedded into many software platforms. And today, if we are going to like see like like how cloud native is evolving, it's not just Wasm Edge. There are many other projects like Wasm Cloud. In fact, many applications built on top of Kubernetes that are going to leverage WebAssembly. And if you look at this table, like this is a comparison. So this comparison comes from uh, Mortis Captain from the University of Tilburg, published an article comparing WebAssembly against Docker in machine learning. And he ran inference in both Docker and WebAssembly and concluded, as we can see in the results, that WebAssembly is about five times faster and 10 times smaller than Docker. Docker. So this arena is huge. It's, it's expanding, it's growing, and it's ever evolving. And there is a lot of future that we see here. And today, if I suggest so, then I have my friend and a, my co-speaker, Shivai, uh, who will be showing us a small tutorial uh, that will show the intersection of web with cloud native and machine learning. Uh, so over to Shivai. Thank you so much, Pritanjay, for that amazing information regarding the usage of 
WebAssembly inside of cloud native and web ecosystems. So as WebAssembly is increasingly being used in the cloud, it has now sort of become a universal runtime for cloud native applications because of its high performance and lower resource consumption. And what that means is that now a lot of developers who are building cloud native use cases also want to use JavaScript to write business applications. That means we need to support JavaScript in WebAssembly. And what will happen is that we can actually support calling Rust functions from JavaScript in a WebAssembly runtime to take advantage of the WebAssembly's computational efficiency. And the Wasm Edge WebAssembly, which is one of the fastest uh, WebAssembly runtimes, can actually allow you to do that. And again, as I've already mentioned that what we can do is that to embed JavaScript within a uh, WebAssembly, we can try to actually go ahead and build a WebAssembly based JavaScript interpreter program for web edge, for Wasm edge. And that actually is useful to build with the help of quick JS, which is a JavaScript engine is really small and embeddable, and it's actually much more compact than the standard V8 engine that we typically use. And it also comes with Wasm based, Wasm edge based extensions like network sockets and also TensorFlow based interfaces incorporated into the interpreter as JavaScript APIs. And you'll need to install Rust to basically build this interpreter. Now, one of the biggest usage of actually going ahead and using this is that we can now basically run JavaScript programs inside of the WebAssembly sandbox. And the WebAssembly uh, Web, uh, Assembly Edge, or that is the Wasm Edge runtime, provides us that uh, lightweight, high performance uh, cloud native JavaScript applications. Now, with this particular application, with uh, Quick JS and uh, the integration of Wasm Edge, we can basically allow the application itself to be written in Rust and compiled into WebAssembly. And then it can be compiled and deployed as a single Wasm based bytecode file. And JavaScript functions can be directly embedded into the Rust application. And the JavaScript source code can be actually included either at compile time or at uh, runtime through uh, a file. And basically the Rust of a program can actually handle computationally intensive tasks in the application while the JavaScript can be used for, let's say, handling the uh, business logic. So we are going to be looking at one of those examples. Uh, I have basically created a simple uh, function over here, which is basically the main dot RS. Now, this is the following Rust program, which basically embeds a JavaScript program at compile time. So as you can see over here, I've defined basically my function, my main function, which has defined uh, a code where we have taken up an example of a TensorFlow light demo. Now, basically this TensorFlow light demo code will be used to showcase uh, the detection of a particular food and it will be able to print its label and the, the uh, basically the percentage of accuracy or is it the confidence uh, that will print by using a data set and we'll be using a df light model so over here as you can see that we have included the js code and we have also given the arguments inside of the quick js uh, which um, are set into the quick js runtime uh, since it's a smaller engine and um, now if we quickly go ahead and actually look at um basically what now we can do is that we have also provided another example which is basically this main.js file now basically we can build the rust and the javascript application into a single webassembly bytecode program which i'll just quickly show to you but basically what we are essentially doing is that the rust code could actually pass the data into the javascript code by passing the arguments or even modifying the included javascript source code directly and the javascript source code could actually return the values by writing it to an, into a temp file so basically what we have done is that we have included inside of our main.rs that is our rust file we have included the code for including our um, tensorflow uh, based um, tf light based uh, demo that we have been we are using that is the main.js now the main.js code itself contains the Wasm Edge TensorFlow extension JavaScript API, 
that uh, as I've already mentioned that the quick JS also has TensorFlow based uh, extensions. And over here in this one, we are basically using the Wasm Edge TensorFlow extension uh, in which we are going to be actually reading and classifying an image uh, that is based on uh, the ImageNet model. And as you can see uh, from the code that first we have imported the TensorFlow Lite over here, and then we have imported basically an image that we can change. And then we are changing uh, the image RGB and we're resizing it. And then we are now starting off a new session in which we are basically calling in our um, TensorFlow Lite file, which is basically a food classifier based on ImageNet that we have created. And then we are going to be printing our outputs inside of the predictions that we're getting using the mobile net view. And um, we have also created a label file through which we will be able to match the label of the prediction. And finally, then we are going to be printing the label and the confidence that we receive. So basically this main.js file is having the entire uh, code of running the logic behind the machine learning part, which is basically running the TensorFlow code and being able to detect. Over here, we'll be able to change the different types of images. And I'll just quickly also show you. So for this current demo, I'm going to be using the image of a pizza that you can see over here. Uh, again, who doesn't uh, like food? So we're going to be using an image of a uh, pizza and uh, we're going to be running this. So basically now we can go ahead and build the Rust plus JavaScript application into a single WebAssembly bytecode. And what we're going to be doing over here is that we are going to be running a command uh, that is going to be uh, using the cargo. So essentially what it will do is that, uh, so let's try to write that quickly. So we are going to be using cargo, then we are going to be using build because we are going to be using this to actually build the Rust plus the JavaScript application into that single WebAssembly bytecode. So I'm, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be simply just adding my cargo build and then I'm going to be giving my target as the Wasm32 Wasi. And uh, then I'm going to be giving it the release uh, flag. And now, um, an extension to this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving it another flag and that, that's going to be the features flag. And in the features, I'm going to be giving it TensorFlow. And the reason behind this is that why we are adding this features flag is because it asks the Rust compiler to basically use the Wasm Edge TensorFlow extension API. And that is going to be really important to use when we are actually going ahead and building uh, this application. And uh, because we are actually going ahead and using the TensorFlow based uh, extension within uh, that is provided within uh, the Wasm Edge with support for JavaScript that we're using using QuickJS. Now, another thing that you'll also uh, sort of look over here, which we can sort of see is that we are also using uh, basically the Wasm. Uh, 32 was and that is also super important to use when we are going to be building basically um, when we are going to be building the JavaScript interpreter for our uh, web Wasm Edge. So um, adding that features and adding that Wasm was is really important. So once we have done this, we can actually go ahead and execute this command. And then simply go ahead and just you know run uh, this command. And as you can see, that it very quickly is able to generate uh, the build. And this build basically helps to create. It basically helps to uh, create uh, the build. And for that, what we'll be going to be doing is we are going to be using the wasm edge command. And we can simply use wasm edge and go into the directory and go into that specific path where basically our executables have been created for that. I'll be providing the link for that. So basically it's under the target and we are going to be going to Wasm32 uh, since we're using that and Wasi, and then we're going to be going to the releases and going to basically the quick JS. And one thing to keep in mind is that I'm missing something over here. And the important part is that I'm going to, I'm missing basically the TensorFlow extension. And uh, we, since we are using the TensorFlow extension, uh, we also need to actually add that to the Wasm Edge. So uh, as I'll add over here, uh, the uh, the uh, Rust-based Wasm, um, the thing that we'll also be adding over here is 
rather than just using the wasm heads, we also need to include in this wasm heads a tensor flow. So we're going to be using that as our uh, key over here. And let's try to run this now. Let's see, I think. Okay, so now once uh, the target has been created, the next step is to basically go ahead and run this executable with the help of wasmh. For that, I'll quickly just go ahead and write the wasmh command. Now, one thing to keep in mind is since we are using a TensorFlow based extension, we are also need, need to be adding that inside of wasmh. So we'll be using uh, wasmh TensorFlow. And apart from this, we'll be going to, going to be using the directory flag and we're going to be adding the path uh, for our target file. So we're going to be using target and then we're going to be using wasm32 wasi and then we're going to be going to the release folder and going to quick js and add the rust file. So this will be wasi.wasm. So this should be good enough to now run and give us So this should be now good enough to give us basically the value and it should print basically what it finds inside of that image that has been given and it will give out the, or it will sort of render the result for you. In the meantime, it actually does that again, just to sort of look at what we have sort of uh, seen so far is that over here, as you can see that we are embedding the entire uh, function of this JavaScript code inside of Rust. And it's basically helping us to run the business logic through JavaScript and the business logic over here being uh, the machine learning program through which we are able to, uh, you know, go ahead and classify a particular food item. So things like creation of the data and rendering of the data is all can be handled with the help of Wasm. And while the business logic can be written in JavaScript and all of that is being run with the help of the Wasm Edge runtime. And as you can see, basically it gives us the label as pepperoni, which is pizza and gives us a confidence of 38%. Now let's try to go ahead and change the uh, pizza. So apart from pizza, we have a lovely burger. So let's try to actually go ahead and change the pizza to a burger. And for this, once we actually go ahead and make this change, we'll have to uh, create another uh, wasm uh, build. So we'll go ahead and simply just use the command again. So we're going to be going ahead and creating another wasm build. And once we are done with that, we can simply again go and run our wasm edge TensorFlow to render uh, the next label and conference. So we should ideally get a burger with a confidence as well. But I hope uh, with this demo, you're able to see how we are able to actually go ahead and build a Wasm edge based runtime that is able to import or sort of embed uh, Rust. And inside of the Rust, we are embedding JavaScript. And that basically allows us to run all these machine learning based applications in um, these uh, edge devices with the help of Wasm being that center point of being that runtime. Wasm edge is officially adopted by the CNCF. And again, it's a hugely popular uh, um, runtime for building cloud native and also uh, smart contract based uh, applications. So as you can see, the label is a hamburger and the confidence is 68%. So I hope that sort of gives you a quick overview on how we can basically go ahead and create uh, these applications. So uh, just some of the things to keep in mind is that you can use JS. Uh, that is a really small embedded runtime um, that is provided uh, and it can be used directly with Wasm Edge because it has a lot of different embeddings and you can directly use that with uh, different kind of TensorFlow models. You can use your own TensorFlow model by embedding your own custom uh, TensorFlow Lite uh, model or you can also run it for standard TensorFlow models as well. And that way you can run these applications and build very quick to use applications. Now, of course, Wasm Edge is one of the fastest 
uh, WebAssembly based runtimes. And you can even actually make this quicker by using, let's say, WASMF's TensorFlow Lite, um, which can actually help to bring uh, at least 10 times the improvement in terms of the overall detection and the prediction that are being made. So thank you so much for watching this demo. Thank you so much, Shivai, for that awesome tutorial. And I hope that uh, the audience would have not only really loved it, but would have got the intuition to learn more about how WebAssembly is interconnecting not only cloud native, but also machine learning as well as web. So thank you so much to everyone who joined us. Over to you, Shivai. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. As you have said, uh, I hope that with this talk, you're able to understand how these wide range of technologies today can be brought into a single uh, functioning application with the help of WebAssembly. Web WebAssembly is definitely the future for web, for cloud native applications. So you can reach we'll... out to us on these following handles. And uh, now we will be waiting for your question and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.